Hey guys and welcome back. In this video I wanted to talk about a supposedly new feature of Houdini 17 called the soft constraint and uh, all this is in reality is actually a, a spring constraint that works and I'm not very clear as to why this has been promoted as if it's going to change destruction or allow you to do something new but it's definitely not going to it doesn't introduce anything uh, new and if you read the documentation the soft constraint is one of the several constraints blah 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 and then like spring constraint soft constraints apply a force that is proportional to the distance between the anchor but there is some difference in behavior between the two constraint types the soft constraint is significantly more stable and will not blow in situations that are trouble uh, troublesome for the spring constraint. So it is very well known that the uh, current spring constraint in Houdini and or in Bullet in general uh, can easily explode and it's not usable in production. So the soft constraint is supposedly the the version that fixes these issues. But what it's actually doing uh, or providing us what type of motion does it give us is not something that we can use in destruction and I, I have um, I'm gonna start with the same file from uh, from before this is where we left off with the mix constraint and I'm gonna change a few things I'm gonna create a, a box And let's copy this. Okay, I'm going to create a line. And let's set this to 10, 20, set this to 40. And let's use this geometry and this guy so I want to to have something made of um, multiple boxes and then I'm gonna add a collision geometry so I want this guy to fall down and let's assemble this this geo and let's go to dops and let's create an rbd object or rbd packed object and let's paste the path and I'm gonna change it here to box and it's a static geometry okay so let me disable all this I don't need the constraints for now I just want to see the box is falling okay I don't need the emission as well and let's change this to flat shaded. Cool. So let's go back. Let's add some uh, constraints. I'm not going to change their type or anything. I'm just going to use uh, set them all up to be a pin constraint. So we did the the glue mixing thing. The, sorry, the mix constraint. I'm not going to use that. I'm just going to copy this chain. And I don't need that. Okay, and we're gonna scale them down to points. And this is our new constraints. And let's go back. So this guy, we, we don't need any of the bending for now. I'm gonna create a hard pin constraint and connect this. And let's call this pin. And the rest length is zero. And let's see what we get. Cool, so we have a springy motion. Uh, that is holding up the pieces. Now, what's happening with the, because the anchor point is at the center, the pieces are allowed, and this is because of the collision, they are allowed to create gaps in between them. With the spring constraint, and let's do that, let's add a spring constraint, not the new one, this is the old one, the unstable one. Uh, the rest length is zero, same thing. Let me move these guys up and let's take a look and see what we get. I'm going to change this to a pin. And now the pieces are allowed to uh, uh, separate, 
but there is a resistance to that. There is a resistance that pulls them back together, and that resistance is controlled by this strength. So it's still not too high. Okay, see so now that they're pulling back each other. Let's increase it even more. And you can clearly see that it's the system is getting unstable already. And the cool thing with the spring constraint, if it works, we have this damping, damping feature, which means as the object bends and rotates, it's going to apply force a force that holds them back. So it, it's not very, the softness or the deformation is not uniform. As it gets deformed, the more it gets deformed, the more force it's going to apply back. But it, this is the old spring constraint. And uh, as you can see, it's very unstable. And we're going to test the new one in a second. But the main uh, thing is, with the spring constraint, you get the separation between the pieces. Okay, we don't want that in in destruction. We don't want to separate any RBD pieces. We want everything to stay as close as possible to each other, and that's the that's where the heart constraint uh, comes in, the pin constraint, which doesn't allow any stretching. It's just rotation. Okay, but the thing that's missing from the uh, the heart constraint is this damping feature, as these guys bend. There is nothing that holds them or uh, uh, there is no force that uh, prevents them from uh, getting deformed too much. Okay, there is no resistance to that resistance to that deformation or that rotation. And that's the that's where the spring constraint comes in. But again, it allows the stretching and it's very unstable. So we're going to create the new soft attached constraint. Uh, sorry, the bullet soft constraint. This is the new. You can see the UI is very similar. The same options. Rest length, I'm going to set it to zero. I'm going to set this to 10,000 for now. And let's call this pin. And let's hit play. And you can see it's very, very stable. Okay. But again, it's allowing the, the stretching to happen. So let's increase the damping and see what we get. So as this object deforms and bends, there is more, there is bending, um, there is resisting, resistance to that bend. Okay, the higher this value, the more resistance it's going to have. And let's increase this even more. Cool. So that's basically the the idea is this, this guy works. But this is not what we want we don't want any separation between the pieces and this is not something that we can guarantee also this guy is much slower than the hard pin constraint okay and um i i'm not i don't use this to be honest maybe f for certain types of metal if we want def uh, denting and stuff like that uh we could use this but so far i i didn't have to uh to resort to this and I'm going to show in the next video a proposed alternative way on how we can add this damping feature which I I'm not seeing it working perfectly yet uh, I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna propose a workflow that can allow us to have this damping feature with the hard pin constraint uh, so we're gonna take a look at that in the next video and the conclusion to this give it a try uh, try to switch from hard pin to bullet uh, to the soft constraint and see how it goes see how the result looks like i personally still use this guy because it's much faster uh, less memory and it's more stable and the damping feature it's not it's not perfect here either so i will show you guys the idea that i have to get the damping if we have to and then it's really up to you guys to decide which which way to go but uh, there is no new feature in Houdini 17 and when it comes to constraint. It's just that we now have a spring constraint that works. That's pretty much it. Okay, uh, see you in the next video.